All right, now let's talk about the NT Corporator versus the Stock Corporator. Now I got an NT Corporator here. I mean, my bad. A shy clone, as they call the famous corpse. <laughs> now, I'm gonna compare it to um, it's my uh, goodie. It's my uh, goodie box here. It's about five years worth of. Carburetor ports and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. Same thing as this one here. A little combination of carburetors and carburetor ports and yeah, you name it, full carburetors and everything. But let me tell you one thing about this. The reason I'm making this video is um. Actually, this is a speed corp. So, um, I want to compare this to this. Now, I've been building bikes for five years. This corp. I never had an issue with besides maybe this top screw or maybe the screw in there can be easy easily corrected and sometimes this comes out so sometimes I like to get the second generation speed corp which is um, some of my big boy here it's my main rat a lot of you guys probably already seen it in action. 32 tube, 29 inch. This is the, um, actually this, another thing I want to tell you guys. If you don't think you can get these filters to fit on, um, a stock corp, it's a fucking lie. Well, I got a shorty on this one because I like to run the shorties. I like full flow because I poured all my engines from the jug all the way through through the intake and same thing on here on this one I got a diffuser if you don't know what that is it's a manifold for your exhaust and this exhaust here you see the flange isn't the same because um, I got a um, guy that makes these and it's port matched for your engine instead of a circle it's the exact port match and you can also dremel it out a little bit more and port match so this here piece is port match from here all the way through the jug even the jug is a um, little ported on this one I didn't do any porting to the, um, the case match because when I got this engine off eBay Actually, I didn't get it off eBay. This is the second engine of mine for this bike. I had this bike here about three years. Now, um, I had a rod bearing go bad in this, the, the, the beginning, the first engine. So, I took a rod. Well, that was after like a couple years. And I did actually uh, put some regular gas in it trying to get home one day. You know, <laughs> I had the smaller tank now. Now I got the bigger tank, so I corrected that problem. And um, I put a little bit too much regular gas, and instead of my piston and all of that, it actually just sees the uh, crank rod burn up, which was cool. So I changed, and this was a smooth engine. This engine was on um, Banggood. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that. 
it was on banggood.com for uh 129 no i'm sorry 119 and they um advertised it as balanced and this and that so i gave it a try and actually this was one of my fastest engines that i ever bought stock out the box so this bike was running 30 in the 30 high 30s stock with a stock exhaust stock well i ordered a speed car for it it actually had a, a head on it that was um you know just a stock head slant head but i think it was milled that's what i think but i'm not sure because i ended up changing the rod same bottom end changing a few other parts that went bad like this um clutch arm thing you know those good for going bad so when i put this uh second crank in and built it back up with the same exact head stock cdi i got a two wire magneto i always run those they more reliable and um it was shitting and getting just as before if not better so i said okay all right this engine got potential so i end up upgrading the filter put a few stickers link the seat back ordered the seat c9 seat had a few issues with the kickstands before and i end up have to um i don't know if you can see it here but i put a little rubber piece here but actually this is um two kickstands welded into one and then this here is a coaster brake arm that i use as my um my footstool and that's the piece that's here but i took it off a, a rim and bent it if you know what i mean and this exhaust here it was the pebs sick, sick bike ports um exhaust i modified it and um you know i made it up myself i do my own welding this here got 29 um, inch, uh, was the Genesis. So I got a CDI that I'm upgraded. I got the Rocket one and I, it's kind of like fast already. So I really ain't in a hurry to put that on there. You know what I'm saying? Just maybe one day and there's some of the rest of the setup. It's all got rubber on both sides. It's got the stock, um, you know, but I changed that out. So you know a little bit better sticking it up it's got a 32 tooth like i said before yeah but um this carb here is the first generation speed corp and these fucking things here you can make them yourself i made this one i bought one on um one of these websites but it's the same one that comes on the shack clone the uh famous corp they call it all they did is took the rubber piece off of here drill two holes you know, match the diameter up with your stock. You can drill two holes yourself and use both. So I made that one myself. And what I mean by first generation, first generation um, speed car, that's this here. It's got the on and off switch on the side also. It don't go straight into the side. And that's that. But um, this one here, I bought it like this, but I end up getting that that um that that uh, famous corp. That's, that's the same damn corp. So I ain't do no but drill two holes in the fucking fit just right. So I saved a lot of money, you know what I'm saying? And these heads here, I like to rent them, man. Heads are perfect for motorized bikes because it keeps them cool. It adds compression, you know. It just all around makes them ride good, you know what I'm saying? Compared to the stock. So that if you're up looking to upgrade. That's got to be your first thing to do. A head, first thing to do. And a pipe. Me, myself, I like to build pipes, but I've been running these little thrusters, little um, bulldogs, besides on my 29. But I just built this up here. It's got the thruster bulldog. But, um... This bike runs, man. It's like 48, 48, 50 miles, man. Downhill, it's like, I, I can't even tell you. But I got a 32 tooth, 32 tooth, I'm sorry. And I got a um, double gauge, twig gauge spokes on here. I just bought these tires from Little Candles. They kind of small. I had bigger tires on here, but these pretty, um, they got a visitor. Hey, Beezer, what's up, baby? Big head ass. 
but yeah I um, upgraded to the disc brake on the front um, shock forks um, man just about everything you know um, I got the little the, um, high performance CDI same head I got a um, diffuser slash manifold on here too with the pipe speed corp run pretty good lean back C9 one of the comfortable seats on the market I think that's my um, you know and I usually run that's my my advice you know that's my that's what I think but um I usually run Lucas oil let me do her sir thank you sir you so much you so kind but anyway I usually you run Lucas or I got another one I've been trying out man it's it's um let me show you right fast it's actually Vaveline but uh oh my bad I have tried Vaveline out too but it's um STP hey look at this it's a fucking neat little fucker here old school pretty bitch yeah, but this um here is um STP brand. I guess it's not so bad. I I kind of like it. It's not um fully th synthetic or anything like that, but um it's not bad. And I usually run 3 ounces to the gallon. Only good oil. No gas station oil. And sometimes this is what I load my chain with. So, you know, but not nah, that's very often only on newer bikes. Like sometimes you know how when you um, run a bike for the first time, you get that knocking up inside of here because you get this want to you know eat all away what it need to do to run, and you know it does it. Like this engine here has never been ran. It'll make a couple crunching sounds in there before it, it want to go ahead and ride smooth and sometimes i use my um this um motor assembly grease it's just white grease it's peter you can do everything for a motor with this grease that need grease it's good for burns too also and for glue if you don't have a gasket believe it or not on these bikes this high temp gasket will work I think I tried it down here before a little while back and it actually worked but I usually use it here because I don't um I don't usually run gaskets here because you never can find one that's port mats so I usually let it sit overnight make put a big glob on there and you know let it sit overnight and let it get hard and uh you know once I put it on it's like just a rubber seal so it works nice you know what I'm saying and this one of the bikes that I'm building up here is for a customer it's gonna have um, front and back brakes it's got a um, coaster brake on the back it's got a um, which is a V brake you'll call it on the front I'm still wiring up now that's where the cable in and that I got to do a little painting on it but overall as far as the bike color is clean so I'm just gonna, you know, hook, hook a couple extra things up and that'll be that. Then I got this one here, man. It's got, I already start building it because, you know, when these frames come, only thing they come with is the um, cuff burns for the headset and the bearings and the, uh, you know, everything. No handlebars, no forks, no cuff burns for that. I have to add those, no um, sprocket or anything. You know, none of those. You have to add all of that. And sometimes when you put a coaster brake on these, the forks are wider for like um, cassettes for like uh, 26 uh, mountain bike cassettes or 10 speed cassettes. So that, that'll slide right on. But a mountain bike, I mean, a um, coaster brake, you have to put one bolt on one side and turn the bike sideways, lean on it until that um, stud slides through the frame and start tightening from there. That's the problem I had with that one. But other than that, it's no biggie. And that's like about six more bikes that I'm not willing to show right now. Now 
Now these carburetors, man, this to me is junk. Junk, junk, junk. I got one brand new. I'll smash it with a fucking mallet on camera right now. I never in my life use them, but I know a couple guys use them. They say you change the jet. Oh, you change the jet, they run good. Well, why they come like that if they never run good when you buy them? You have to change the jet. So I think it's some, I don't know. I never had good luck with them. I sold a bike a guy, man. I, I sold this guy a bike for 700 This bike was hauling ass 50, a 26 aluminum frame, 32 sprocket, was hitting 50 easy, 52, 54 downhill. He went and changed my speed out first generation that I had the jet tuned and everything to one of these fuckers. He lost about 10 miles per hour and asked me why. Ha! Where the fuck is the old car, man? I had this bike two years running perfect, flying. Damn near keeping up with my big boy. But everybody don't know. So these carbs, man, I'm going to tell you. My big bike here. I'm running in the 50s, easy. On flat land, 48, I topped it at 48. Downhill, who knows? Now you see I have no revalve. That's one thing I am thinking about upgrading for a couple of these bikes. Actually, this one for sale. But I'm gonna add a revalve on there and I'm gonna put that CDI on there and see what I can, how much I can gain. But I, none of my bikes have revalves. None of my bikes have DIOs. None of those, none of that crap. I usually use just, you know, uh, port. I, I do the, I mess with the port timing and get RPMs and I do porting and things like that to get them to 50, which I think is good for a stock engine where I have to get the DIO and all that. But I don't think those, you know, they run your bikes too lean and this and that. They cool for racing, I think. That's, that's my opinion. But as far as the everyday rideable bike, I don't think that's what you want you know what i'm saying because a lot of guys i see they have them on there and next month they might not have it on there or they bikes always down now my bikes i can store any one of my bikes up and ride them hard as i want all day every day with no problems but yeah that's just you know um i had to make another video and show you um guys what i use to port out my bikes with i got a um shit a host of shit but yeah we'll go through that another day you know if you guys want to see some more videos send me a like subscribe and um we'll go from there thanks and um don't forget to to like or subscribe thanks